Hello, my name is Bill Webb, and I'm here to talk about triple quad mass spectrometers and their application in our laboratory. The big niche that triple quads serve is the ability to quantitate, not just relative quantitation. Sample A has got three times more than sample B, but absolute quantitation. Sample A has X nanogram per ml of compound B in it. This is very useful because oftentimes the samples that we we're looking at are quite complex. Tissue extracts, uh, whole cell lysates, where there can be thousands of compounds present, but we're only interested in looking at a few of them, and oftentimes they're present at very low concentrations. Triple quads provide a means of sorting through all the extraneous material and allowing us to get at only the compounds of interest that we wish to measure and provide a nice clean signal with which to quantitate. And this will allow for a much more accurate quantitation, more confident quantitation, and they do the job better than other mass spec spectrometers on the market. The reason they're able to do this is by a technique called multiple reaction monitoring. In a multiple reaction monitoring experiment, we'll set the first quadrupole to only allow a given m over z value to pass. In this case, we're looking at caffeine, which has an m over z of 195. This is sent through to the collision cell, where it is collided with inert gas, which is typically argon or nitrogen, producing fragment ions. The third quadrupole will then isolate on a particular fragment ion, in this case m over z of 138, so only a compound that has apparent mass or apparent m over z value of 195 and a product m over z value of 138 will make its way all the way from the source to the detector. The reason this is useful can be seen here. This is a single quadrupole experiment where we're only looking for a particular m over z value of a compound that we uh, wish to measure. Now, this sample is a serum extract, which is quite complex, and it's not surprising that we may have more than one compound that has the same m over z value as the compound that we wish to, to, uh, to measure. This can result in a lot of artificial area being introduced and not very uh, accurate or confident quantitation. Now, if we take the same sample, analyze it on a triple quad using MRM mode, this trace now looks like this. So all the compounds that have the same parent m over z value, but not the same product m over z value, are filtered out. This gives us a nice clean peak, which we can much more confidently quantitate and get a good accurate number on. The last topic to touch on is the use of internal standards in a in quantifying your, your sample. Uh, most samples require a fair amount of sample prep before they're analyzed. And in each step of this process, there are sample losses. So if we were going to do an external standard technique where we're only looking at area under the curve as proportional to concentration, and this slide, the y-axis would be area and the x-axis is concentration, these losses would result in us reporting an artificially low, low number. By adding an internal standard, a compound which is completely the same or very similar to the compound that we're measuring but only differs in mass, those losses are taken into account because we don't look at the absolute area of the peak. We're now looking at the ratio of area of the compound of interest versus the internal standard. This often results in very nice linear calibration curves, further aiding in our confidence in getting at the accurate number of the compound present. Thank you very much for your time. If you have any other questions, please visit us at xmsonline.scripts.edu.